Hello, my name is Eduardo Barazal Morales, and I'm going to speak Portuguese. Well, here I want to present is the importance of having a well-configured DNS system that uh, should be a uh, provider based. Uh, so to that end, first of all, I want to give you some basic knowledge on how the DNS works only to uh, standardize uh, uh, the level of everybody. The DNS uh, system ends up being uh, standardized with a name or an address uh, such as uh, .com .br. So you may ask what the IP is associated to this name. Now, how can we understand the way it works? The previous design was pretty basic. If we put the entire system there to be able to understand it, we have some special machines that we and we need to understand how they work to know how to configure them. We have the recursive DNS machine. We have the authoritative DNS and uh, um, root authoritative DNS. So we have a computer that wants to access a certain site, for instance, .br. Then they send a, a recursive DNS query that go and seek that information for us. So it runs behind the uh, root authoritative DNS and ask uh, what is example.br? Authority says, says, well, I don't know it, but I know who has that information. So it comes back with the information of uh, the authoritative DNS.br, uh, recursive DNS. And then this, the latter asks uh, authoritative.br, who uh, authoritative, uh, example BR dot br is and they ask that to the owner of that information so the authoritative dns will look for the ipv4 and ipv6 address associated to that name then they receive the ipv6 address in this case and will save it in a cache in the dns recursive dns and will uh, answer it will respond to the user so having understood that we need to to talk about the importance of DNS in uh, the matter of delay. We need to understand why it is important to well configure DNS. So now we, we are speaking of the impact of a large distance to the recursive uh, 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 DNS server. Many people use uh, public DNSs such as 888 or 111 that work with the Anycast technique for the search. But if the DN public DNS is very far from us, we start with the impact of latency. So we must remember that uh, in a website, when you try to exit that uh, website, you need to look for information in other servers. So you have several DNS searches that take place before you get all the contents of the page. For example, when you try to access example.com.br, you receive a GET and HTTP. And what do we have in that content? This is information to look up the JavaScript site for metrics or other pages that may be located in other servers, but not necessarily in the server where one is looking up this information. So to download that context, which was example.com.br, which is a point of access that one had, there were several communications with DNS servers in order to download the entire contents. This is an example. If we are in Panama and we are not using uh, recursive here in this region. We're using one in another country. For example, in Mexico, we have the impact of latency. If there's a query, there's a reply. We multiply this by two. So we go behind the authoritative DNS to look up the information. This increases the latency. So that one is in the United States. There is an increase in the latency in the communication. Then we'll be looking up the information of a website in Brazil, in authoritative DNS in Brazil. Once again, there is a further increase in the latency because the information is far away. We therefore increase the delay of the first connection. So we wish to download the content and we look up the IP, we then download the contents, the connection that becomes slow. The farther away we are from the machines, the stronger is the impact on the network. Here we have some solutions. 
in, in order to decrease the latency, one of the recommendations is to install your own recursive DNS. The closer you are to the machine, the lower the latency. So therefore, for providers to have a recursive DNS close is very important. Then we are close to the root DNS servers. This might be near a mirror or somewhere where you cannot see whatever is just all over the world. Some are in the traffic exchange point. So if you establish the connection to an IXP, we can decrease the latency to establish the connection of from the recursive DNS to the root server. One of the other things that we can do is to install an instance of the DNS root server. Then we have the ICANN process. We can ask for a copy of the root DNS server from the provider. Finally, if you want to have something that is simpler than having a DNS root server in your network, you can use hyperlocal. This is a copy of the root zone close to where you are. So this decreases the latency. Now we have a faster name resolution, so your internet is faster. When we consider about having these machines, we must also consider being cautious about a couple of things because they can be attacked and this can affect the networks. Let us speak about attacks and solutions and the relevance of proper configuration. We are aware that there are gains in having these machines very close, but these have to be configured very well. So, for example, the attacks. Otherwise, you might be vulnerable to attacks. One of the, these attacks is address spoofing. If we have an open DNS recursive server, one might do a query to your recursive DNS server doing spoofing at the origin address. And instead of saying the address in 192.0.2.1, they say it's 203.0113.1. They send this to the recursive server. The DNS receives this query and will reply to the one in the origin, which is 203.0113.1. They forward the packet in the blue circle. Now, people use DNS because it allows an amplification of attack. They send a query and they receive a big reply. The larger the replies sent to a machine, the more that machine is overloaded. This then leads to a DDoS. We also have the man in the middle. These are the attackers that are in the middle. For example, you are with your computer and wish to access the site example.br. Now, one other question about the recursive servers. It might be someone that is looking into the network. They see the packet and simulate being the recursive DNS. So that's a man in the middle and respond more rapidly than the recursive server because the recursive server has to look up the information in different authoritative servers. They answer with a uh, false IPv4 or IPv6 address, indicating a server that they control. So you might end up adding your password to that site, and you will be subject to an attack because of password theft, which will then be used with other purposes. Um pouco à frente do seu recurso. It might also be in front of the recursive server. This is when it simulates being the authoritative server. When we look for the example.br, the recursive server will look up these in different places. The message is intercepted, but the reply arrives before the correct authoritative server. We receive th this information. The recursive server thinks this is the correct information and is then forwarded to the person who made the query. This is then sent to a malicious server. So 
configuration is very important. We saw the impact of delay. We're trying to figure out solutions to this, including locating the machines in closer sites. But we have to configure this properly in order not to be vulnerable. We have the manners, which is an initiative that has an anti spoofing initiatives for providers. The packets should not go out of the origin network. But we also need to look at the recursive servers. If we include these in the network, we have to use this only for our customers. If these are opened to the rest of the world, we run the risk of this being used for the purpose of an attack. These have to be configured only for the customers. This will decrease the vulnerability. So when we add filters like RPF or ASLs, which are protections, this will contribute to avoiding generating traffic with incorrect origin. In other words, we are speaking, for example, of manners or recursive DNS servers, which are not in manners, but providers should always bear in mind that they have to work with manners. Manners encompasses many more security things. Now, coming back to the DNS case, a further important thing is to use DNSSEC. This is a security extension of the DNS. This will provide authenticity and integrity through digital signatures. These will prevent cases of man in the middle with misinformation. We'll be checking a whole chain of signatures to verify whether the information received comes from someone who's authorized to send us this information. So we'll be receiving the correct signature in terms of authenticity and integrity. But DNSSEC doesn't provide encryption for the purpose of confidentiality. Data are not encrypted. We work more on the signature side of the data to see where this information comes from. I'll also like to speak about another initiative, which is an ICANN initiative, and this is what we call kindness. This is how we configure our DNS properly in order to see what is best for our network. These are best operational security practices when configuring our DNS. Here we have the different categories. If we configure an authoritative or recursive server, because this is a very brief 15-minute presentation, I will now focus on the one that has two IS, uh, this is for the ISPs. And let's see some of the practices that we have to implement if we have an authoritative one. Let us speak about the recursive DNSs addressed at ISPs. These are sets of seven practices, three addressed at DNS security, that show what is important in our recursive service. One is DNSSEC, which is a validation must, which should be enabled for recursive resolvers. So then we have the ACL statements. These one who looks up the information must be one of our customers, and this also has to be ensured. And then we have manners and the ASLs in the recursive service. We also have privacy considerations. This is QNA minimization which we have to include as well as some rules to enhance DNS availability and resilience. One of the recommendations, mostly with the providers, is that for recursive and authoritative DNSs is, is that the two must exist but not in the same machine. If we separate this, these, it's far easier to configure them. Having more than one recursive DNS server for the network, if one fails, we have a backup. And finally, monitoring of the services. If there are any issues, one can correct the DNS. And finally, we have a bonus practice, which is a DNS over TLS 
or DNS over HTTPS. This is a bonus which should be enabled. <coughs> and this involves deploying this. I, this is easy to, to protect against eavesdropping and manipulation of DNS queries. There are two messages that I wish to leave here. Sign the manners and sign the kindness. So this is what I had to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eduardo. Any questions? We have no remote questions, so a round of applause.